All right, guys, it's Copper Cutlass, and um, I guess um, I'm making this video because I know I made the kind of prelude to this overall video of upgrading the fuel system, going to the Magna Fuel. I went with the ProStar uh, 500. There is plans of going to E85 in the future, so I figured the bigger fuel pump was going to be the way to go, and... My good friend Mike runs the same pump on a similar horsepower car, but he runs the E85. And I made my choice based off of that. Now, we had some issues. Uh, you know, we kind of, essentially to rule out anything that I could have done wrong, I think um, I had to set up the fuel system like they wanted it, just to eliminate everything. And here is what we found today so i'm going to uh flip the camera and here we go guys so um the alternator you wouldn't make much of it but there's it's a big part of this equation so we got a holly max flow regulator and there goes my remote for my tv and the battery stayed in all right so originally all i did was replace the fuel pump and i went with the um the bulkhead fittings for the fuel pump to dash eight so I can run what I originally already had. Now, as you can see, we have added big, huge dash 12, and it's got a smooth curve into the drop sump. Uh, I didn't want to, this line was already, I did kind of shorten up this line. It was actually, no, I didn't shorten it up. That's why it loops like that, but it's a smooth bend. They don't want any sharp bends. Um, and then, I also went with the drop sump because I think one of the problems with this pump is it moves so much fuel. Cavitation is a serious thing and we don't move enough fuel through our carburetor to kind of keep the fuel, I think in my humble opinion, smooth flow. Uh, so when this return which is right after the fuel pump. And that is mainly to save the pump, to keep it cool. This is a deadhead system. Um, this thing looks like a fire hose just shooting in there. And uh, MagnaFuel, I have to give them a big shout out. Um, they don't sponsor me anything, but their tech line is very, very helpful. Um, and so the one thing the guy told me is if I want to try to eliminate some of the uh, cause you know, like this thing, when it comes down, it looks like, you know, thumb over the garden hose, um, to eliminate some of the problem with the aeration, uh, cavitation that we were having is to run a tube, kind of place it on the back wall of the fuel cell away from the pickup, which is here to try to smooth out that flow and make it like a transitional barrier wall, if you will, kind of to kind Again, it's hard to explain, but I know, you know, again, kind of make it like a waterfall. You know, when water hits the wall, it's going to smooth out and whatever. Ultimately, I don't think that was our issue. But either way, we went to the dash 12, dash 10 after the fuel pump all the way up to the regulator. Uh, now, I still am going to change the regulator because I wasn't happy with the way this came in the box. To be honest with you, I actually had to take it apart and fix it. It's working, but... Not exactly happy that I spent $140 on a pretty damn good regulator. Well, that's Holly. It is what it is. But the spring for the initial check ball coming on the inlet, that spring was laying in the box. Not happy about that. So I had to find a washer to retain the spring, a, a star washer. Um, there is a specific washer, but the star washer worked just enough to maintain the, the spring in place, and it's doing its job. So... What I was seeing was a lot of fluctuation in the fuel PSI. Now, obviously, if the fuel, the engine isn't running and there's no fuel being drawn, your pressure is just going to constantly keep spiking up. And what I was seeing was uh, even at idle, I was seeing the fuel pressure spike up upwards of 12 and 15. But at 12 and 15, you'd start seeing fuel puke out of the fuel vents. So there was no way that that was the case. So my, what I did notice is that this fuel pump draws a lot. Um, they say that it only draws like 13 amps, but it just sucks up the juice. Uh, 
And by that, I mean, I ran this fuel pump for a couple of minutes and it absolutely drained my battery. Um, and a few minutes just messing with it and not running the car. I, that, you know, my alternator is, was also bad. Um, so today I came out here and I put a set of glass packs on there because I, I can't run the car with open headers all the time. I'm going to piss off my neighbors and they've dealt with me pretty good for the last 10 plus years. So I put the header mufflers on there and then I bought this alternator from my friend JJ. If you haven't followed him yet, go follow him over at Twin J Racing. I bought this Power Master alternator from him. Um, now we did do an underdrive pulley but it was almost one to one. So our charging system wasn't charging until about 1500 RPM. Now with this smaller pulley, we're charging around a thousand. So I got the idle set at about a thousand, which is usually where it idles. Um, and it's actually charging now. What I saw in the fuel pressure gauge was super steady, no major drops in, in, um, in fuel pressure or any crazy spikes. So I think what was going on is our fuel pump was quite possibly surging and that surging was creating cavitation and we were seeing those air pockets, um, you know, trying to get pushed through the fuel gauge and, you know, and it was reading a false reading. So that is my theory on that because all I did was I changed the alternator and we saw a huge change so um and uh, doing some research now this is not specified in magna fuels uh instructions but if you look up their specs they tell you what the pump should now they don't give you a flow number because this is a low pressure high volume pump um the i have a fuel pressure gauge at the back um uh, to see what's coming out. And that's the only way that you can tell the, the return pressure. So that's at like set from the manufacturer at 28 PSI, but it's supposed to flow four gallons per minute. So if you do the math four times six and you multiply that, so four times six is like, you know, six and six is 12. We're going to do math here. That's 24. You multiply that by 10, that's 240 gallons per hour um you know and that's pretty damn healthy this fuel pump is capable of supporting 2000 horsepower but they say this is a good fuel pump for a stock application which i assume is like a stock eliminated type application um or you know all out competition up to 2000 horsepower and we kind of fall into that gray area where it's not exactly like stock eliminator but it, this fuel pump, by all means, should work good on our setup. And I did get a different fuel pressure gauge just to rule that out. And the only thing I still haven't replaced is the fuel regulator, which I still have my doubts on. But for now, it's fine. I have another fuel regulator my machinist actually let me have. Um, it's an Aeromotive. This is a nice piece, a lot nicer than what's on there. And we, I'm gonna, I got to buy a couple fittings. And next time we go to the track, we're going to... Bring that with just in case we got to swap it out and have that ready to go. But right now, the important thing is I have to actually button up the fuel cell. Since I did go to a drop sump, our spacing for the brackets changed so we can't use the same holes. And um, But overall, I think I'm going to call this good. Um, you know, uh, I'm looking at my entire setup and what my amperage draw is. And everything I have is on a 30 amp fuse and I only have like four main, um, four real main circuits that, that eat up the juice. And so three times four is 120. I think my alternator that was on there is just long in a tooth and uh, it's somewhere around here or another. And this is the pulley I had on there. And you can see it looks like it's smoked, but that's actually um, rubber dust from me tossing belts and them getting shredded by this little fan this is also bent uh, and it doesn't sound happy the bearing sounds like it's been smoked out um so i'm going to take this over to power master have them rebuild it maybe upgrade it and um you know maybe we'll go to something a little bit heavier 200 amp or something don't exactly know what they would suggest but something that we can grow into 
But I think a, a 150 amp, 120 amp, something like that is, is more than capable of, uh, you know, what we got. Because I know that I've ran both of these fans on 120 amp fuse, so it's not drawing more than 20 amps. Um, and we really don't have a lot of stuff eating juice up. But that fuel pump, that eats some juice up, even though it's on a 30 amp fuse. And again, just like anything else, the fans take up a lot of juice. You know, the electric drive motor uh, for the water pump uh, there's a lot of little things but um at this point i'm pretty happy with the way things are looking it's more promising than a couple of days ago because i've been thrashing on this thing ever since i put the fuel pump on um and next weekend we're going to try to go out and race to kind of shake out the bugs it's not uh one of our classes that we typically race but we're going to run um either pro or super pro which super pro is eighth mile uh there is a cutoff and we just barely scrape by but sometimes being a slow car in a fast feel ain't bad so um and if we run pro well that's quarter mile which is what we really need to see is what this car is doing down the track um as far as the fuel demands of this engine that fuel pressure gauge never read under like five psi ish i want to say somewhere in that neighborhood so it, that's that's kind of all it needs um with the mechanical pump it would drop down to four and it was still enough but uh, that was a NASCAR style Rob MC pump. And they said, you don't want to see less than four pounds of fuel pressure. Um, if you do, there's something wrong, you know, that there's that, that mechanical pump from Rob MC is just badass. And I, I had it for a long time and then I decided to go electric and decided to upgrade it. And here we are fucking talking about it three weeks later. So I'll let you guys go. I hope you guys have enjoyed this and insane saga of this fuel upgrade which was not cheap but when we go to the big block chevy i think it's going to be totally happy with that so we're we're think we're thinking down the, down the line here so we'll let you guys go share like subscribe follow me on instagram is copper Cullis, and we'll see you around